So hello, my name is Andres. Um, I'm from Chile originally. I have lived in the UK for the last 10 years. And I've been meditating since the 18th of May of 2020. And I am a neuroscientist from the University of Cambridge. From my own experience, when I was like transcending, um, I noticed that this state of uh, restful alertness is a very peculiar state because you have, if I can draw a 2D axis on the screen, this is the axis of alertness, so basically how alert you are. And this is the axis of content, so how much stuff you have in your mind. Usually in a normal day, if you are alert, you also have a lot of stuff in your mind. So the two things go together. But in TM, there is this paradoxical effect that you are hyper alert or super alert with little, little, little in mind. And in neuroscience of consciousness, we have very good uh, tools for characterizing in the brain these different states. And one of the dogmas at the moment in neuroscience, if I can call it a dogma, is that the two things, the two dimensions should go along, right? If you are more awake, you should, be, you should have more stuff in your mind. Um, so the motivation for this particular study was, okay, but what happens with the brain or with these metrics that are new and that people think that they go along between the two axes when you have this kind of paradoxical state where there is full alertness and zero content? So we decided to run a study to test one of the most um, well-researched metrics in, in neuroscience at the moment. And this is the idea of measuring how complex the brain is in terms of the brain activity. So what we want to know is whether complexity in the brain, so basically how much information the brain can process, decreases or increases when you are in this transcending state. And our hypothesis is that it should decrease. So basically, even though you're more and more and more and more alert, you are alert, the content of your mind becomes the alertness itself, right? So basically, the, the amount of stuff in your mind decreases. And that should go along with a decrease in this measure of complexity. Why is that important? Well, it is important because we can understand now the brain not just as a machine that generates waves, but also as an information processing tool. So we can understand how much information the brain is processing during the state. That's one thing. And the second thing that to me is very important is that it also fits nicely with the idea that during TM, the borders of perception tend to disappear. So basically your experience tend to become less differentiated. Perception becomes less sharp. And what this metric in the brain predicts is that the less differentiated your experience become, the lower the complexity in the brain should be. So basically a lower, a decrease in complexity in the brain should signify some kind of like baseline state where there is no much perception, but there is a lot of alertness. So that's what we were trying to, to test with this sample of hopefully 40, 45 participants that we're either bringing to the lab or we are traveling somewhere like here, we're in Glasgow and we're testing around 20 participants over a weekend. Um, we bring the participants here, they meditate, we, and then we record the, the brain activity while they do that against a baseline condition. And so that's, that's the premise for the study, and I think that's the, that's the motivation. So what happens with brain complexity when you're in, in, a, state of, uh, in a meditative state? The preliminary results so far, even though we haven't got into the main question, is that we have been capable of replicating previous findings, in particular the uh, increase in alpha activity in the brain, these waves that are like wiggling around 10 times per second, so your brain can actually generate a lot of different waves, but this particular wave that uh, wiggles 10 times per second is something that has been like characterized during the state of meditation for very long. Um, and we, we were capable of replicating that so far. And that gave me a lot of, you know, tranquility. 
Like, okay, cool, we can do that. And now we can move on with the actual new, new question. Um, and I think the implications for the study in the future are at least two. One is that we can have independent research uh, in the UK about TM. Usually most of the research comes from the US and it has been great. It has been there for like 40 years now. But I think there are a lot of developments, developments in neuroscience that we have now tools, new tools to study the brain that I haven't been used in TM at all. Like there are new ways of conceptualizing how the brain, for instance, processes information, how the brain integrates information. And all of these processes are relevant for all kinds of cognitive functions that you can think of, like attention, sleep, creativity, etc. And all of these new ways of looking at the brain haven't been investigated in the context of TM at all. Um, and the reason is mainly because most of the, the bulk of the research on TM was done uh, during the 90s. Uh, and, and before that, for instance, by Dr. Fred Travis, which he's amazing. Uh, but there is like a new wave of people that are interested in this and also new tools that you can use to study the state. So I think that's the second big thing that uh, we can start now thinking of TM uh, and in a way that we couldn't before because we didn't have the tools to do so. So one specific example, for instance, we know now that the brain communicates information, not necessarily in these wiggles, but also in activity that doesn't have any rhythm, which is a bit counterintuitive, but it's, it's, a, it's a fact that has been replicated over and over again. So we want to know how much of this arrhythmic activity, that this activity that doesn't have any particular order, is also capable of telling us whether a participant is in the meditative state or in another state. We don't know that. Um, so what we want to do is to end up with a list of brain signatures or brain markers that are the most useful one for explaining the TM, the, the meditation state. So people in the future, if they want to run a study, for instance, if they want to study Alzheimer's or the effects of TM on creativity, now they will have a list of the markers that they should look for because uh, we're going to kind of increase the list, hopefully, of the features that you can have or the features that you can use uh, to characterize that state. So we're trying to expand the alphabet of uh, the understanding of TM in terms of brain activity.